Hey guys, welcome to Sketch A Day. I'm Spencer and I'm really excited. Thank you so much for all the support. It really does mean a lot. So if you enjoy these videos or if this is your first time, definitely hit that subscribe button and tap the bell, turn on alerts because we go live three times a week here on Sketch A Day and you don't want to miss it. This last Friday we did nature sketching, which was super fun. We did a dolphin, some flowers, landscapes and trees. And today we're going to dig a little bit deeper on trees and I'm going to do kind of a sketch along with me and show you how I think about a tree. If you need suggestions on materials, you can find the links below in the video description. Also, definitely come say hi on the socials. I am at sketchaday.com on Instagram and at daily sketches on Twitter. And of course, there's the Facebook page. Also a great way to reach out and connect. Now, when I think about a tree, really, I'm thinking of something like this where I have a cylinder. I'm using just a simple brush pen today. Just grab what I what I could find. So we have a cylinder like so. And this cylinder is going to split into other cylinders. Okay, now depending on the tree, we'll have certain breaks and all these cylinders really are progressively getting smaller and smaller. Okay, and this is important for me because I tend to think about drawing in a very structural way, meaning trying to understand the underlying geometry behind something. And I feel as though the more you understand that, the easier it is to then draw those things. And why is this important with a cylinder? Well, as you may know from other demos that I've done, when I'm lighting a cylinder, I'm thinking of a few things, okay? So here we have just a general cylindrical shape. And let's say I'm observing the cylinder from this point of view. Now, let's say my light, my light source, hmm, where should we put it? Let's put it here. Let's say my light source is here and it's shining rays, okay, toward the cylinder. Now, if I look at the cylinder from the top, it's kind of like a circle. So here's our light bulb again and it's shining light. This is the top view, just so you guys aren't too confused here. And we're still looking at the cylinder from this view, or even better yet, this view, okay? So as light hits the cylinder, it's gonna hit the surface at what's called a normal. And a normal just means a line that's tangent to that surface. And so as the light is hitting the surface, all of a sudden, at a certain point, these light rays are gonna reflect towards you, or, so here, we'd have a highlight, or just as the light ray is passing this edge, we're gonna get shadow. So that's what forms a shadow core, okay? And right where we have this intensity, we'd have another shadow core on the far side, but we're not really gonna see that. And right where these light rays are really reflecting back towards you in mass, we're gonna have a highlight. Highlight. So what does this have to do with a tree? Well. With, with a tree, if I'm sketching and just doing lines, oftentimes I will apply lines like this on the tree to simulate some sort of texture. So we can do that with our initial example here. And on the far side here, just throw some lines like so. And now I kind of have to deal with transitions. Let's zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little better there. And so now dealing with some transitions, but still being respectful of essentially what would be the shadow core on this tree. And as far as texture goes, it really just depends on the nature of the tree. You know, there might be some more sections or things happening here, but as I'm shading, I'm trying to shade in a way that respects the shadow core of the tree. And these transitions, just put a little heavier line right there, okay? And now I have shadow cores some transitions, a little heavier line, maybe a little bulge here and there, and we can get progressively smaller with these branches, All right? So that's that's kind of the, the way I approach the structure. And of course, since it's a tree and natural, if I come over my sketch with this brush pen, push a little harder, introduce some undulations, for example, I now have something that approximates a tree. Now, when I'm drawing these, I don't draw the cylinders first. I just did this to kind of show and explain to you guys how this, this tree might work. Now, let's say we have the branches going out, okay? 
even further, smaller and smaller cylinders, right? Some of these branches might bend and so forth. We have smaller and smaller. We don't need to draw all of them, but the idea is progressively smaller branches, the further out you go from the tree. Or maybe there is a branch here that got cut off. We can add that, you know, maybe some knots, that kind of thing. All right, a couple of dots here. Now I wanna apply some color and figure out some ways to add some foliage to the tree. Now I know this is on the edge of the paper, but we can throw some ground lines in there just like that. Maybe even a bit of lines here close to the tree on the ground like so. Now you think of a tree, at least I do, and I think brown, brown, the tree has to be brown. Well, actually it's more like a warm gray. Um, when you look at bark, it's a warm gray with some brown notes. So I have here my Bianyo, Bianyo markers, and I'm just gonna use this warm gray five to now shade the trunk. And really it just depends on the type of tree, but I'm trying to be respectful again of the pen lines. I'm not shading too much into the upper portion of the tree here because I want to reserve a little bit of white paper for uh, the foliage itself, okay? If you want a little bit more blending, you can use like a warm gray three for some of these white spots or seven if you're so inclined to introduce a bit more contrast. All right, so now for the canopy, I'm using a desaturated green. And there's a couple ways and strategies to do this. You could introduce a stroke somewhat like this where I'm taking the chisel end of this marker and just repeatedly stroking almost in a random fashion. Some of the areas you could shade in, okay, particularly around here. We'll revisit that with a little bit of darker marker, but hopefully now you can see why I didn't shade in all the branches. I want to be able to obscure this a little bit. All right, so we're combining a few strategies here actually. So some more complete strokes, but as well as some more staccatoed strokes of the chisel tip of the marker to suggest that these are leaves on the tree. And of course, every tree has different shaped leaves and canopy and all that, depending on if it's a deciduous or coniferous tree. Um, that's just something you'll have to decide based on what you're trying to do. But the idea is to just create the effect through that repetitive stroke. And under here, I just wanna go a little bit darker and that's gonna help for one, obscure a bit of the branches that we sketched in first, but also just give the tree a bit of depth. Because when I'm thinking of the upper portion of the tree, if we thought about the trunk like a cylinder, the upper portion of the tree is a lot like a sphere. And you may have seen architectural drawings where you kind of have this thing, something like that. Well, quite literally, I'm thinking of this tree and its foliage like a sphere. So right along the far side, away from the light, if the light's coming from this side, I'm gonna make sure I have a nice shadow core as a part of this tree, okay? So even a simplistic drawing like this would be enough and maybe just a couple undulations here, right? That's another quick way to show a tree if you're doing some sort of landscape or architectural drawing. Um, but really it just depends on what you wanna do and what your goal and objective is. In this case, I wanted something that was a bit more textured with the leaves and had some variety. So you can play with your greens, play with your warm grays for the trunk, or just frankly, depending on what type of tree it is, you might find yourself using something that's a little bit warmer or darker or so forth. Let's go ahead and add some warm gray seven in a few spots here, just to kind of help push the contrast. And notice I'm really just trying to limit it to where there are shadows or a shadow core. You know, maybe some of these branches higher up get a little bit darker and so forth. And down toward the bottom, for example. If you're finding that your tree 
texture or whatever is getting lost, you can sometimes take a white pencil or a white pen and use that to help you out just a little bit. Um, but that's pretty much how I approach something like a tree. Let's just throw some green down here for the ground and so forth. Um, so one approach here, here's another quick approach, like I said. Um, so that gives you a few options for how you can address a tree and a little bit of information about lighting a cylinder as well as texturing through your line work. Well, thanks guys. That was just a quick introduction to how to draw a tree or how I draw and understand a tree. And hopefully you're able to benefit from breaking things down. So when in doubt, rough it out, light till you get it right. And sometimes you just gotta break it down into bits that you understand that make sense for you. Well, thanks for watching. Definitely come say on the socials. I am at sketchaday.com on Instagram and at daily sketches on Twitter. As well as the store has been updated, we now have a pack of 30 Procreate brushes for sale. And if you use the code FIRSTTIMER, you can get a small discount to help with that purchase. And I truly do appreciate the support. Be sure to hit subscribe because like I said, we go live three times a week and I wanna make sure you guys don't miss that. Well, take care guys, and we'll see you next time on Sketch-A-Day.